I put it in like this, it should theoretically work now. Do we have do we have a voice in this chat or not? Yes, let's go. Yes. There we go. <laughs> nice. Oh, guys, <laughs> next <good> time <laughs> anybody gives Ankama flack for technical difficulties when they have a big life, I will be the first one to come out with sticks and start beating people. This shit just miraculously happens like that. Whether you want it or not, you could prepare all you want. Internet goes down, crazy things start happening. Right, so that was our introduction for today. <laughs> <laughs> 15 minutes is okay. Thank you very much for that, Savi. I appreciate it. Right. We are all here today for a special event. This has never happened in the history of English content creation, where we have brought two people that are no strangers to all of you. You've seen them in multiple streams all over the years. You've seen them in Akama Lives. You've seen them in Crossman Notes. They need no introduction. But that is not what we do in the podcast. So... First of all, I'd like to say hello and welcome everyone to the Dofus podcast. I am your host, Single Malt, and you're about to see a conversation with a bunch, a couple of special guests. I don't know about everyone, but you can clearly see that I'm adequately nervous given the caliber we have on today. And I'm also cognizant because of the tech difficulties. Our guests are likely to be nervous as well. Uh, so I count on your diligence chat to type good messages for them, f make them feel welcome. So all of the nerves can go away. We can go through the first difficult three minutes and get to the fun bit, which is the conversation. Whew. I hope that was a good introduction. So without <laughs> further awesome. ado. That was awesome. That is awesome. Thank you very much for that one, Maria. So without further ado, let's get started. I usually start every podcast episode with embarrassing little anecdotes that tie me to the country of origin of our guests. It puts everyone at ease and gets the conversation flowing. But not today. Today, I want you to hear less of me and more of these brilliant people we have in. So I reckon let's just dive in, shall we? Manaya, Papino, good to have you here. How are you feeling right now? <laughs> a little bit well, nervous, <laughs> not gonna lie. Yeah, but you go first. Really glad, <laughs> really glad to be here. Um, thanks a lot for the invitation, though. Uh, it's been it's been great to to be part of it, and I hope we will have good answers for the community. I know you have been preparing this live for uh, quite a few days, few weeks, and yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm I'm eager to to be answering everything. Let's go. Uh, before we get into anything, I'd like to ask people, first of all, can I have a quick um, confirmation in chat? Does anybody need their volume up in? Do you hear Manai all right? Is uh, Papino loud and clear? Can you hear me okay? Just a very quick technical check before we proceed. Papino a little bit higher, okay? Okay. So what I will do is increase Papino's volume towards 100% and Manaya is already on 100%. Cool. I can do two on my end if needed. Is it better now? Is it better? Do you hear me properly? I think we are oh, too high. Too <laughs> high. I'll oh, lower gosh. it from my end. No, no, no. <laughs> Let me lower it a tad bit and this should be all right at 90%. <laughs> Chat is already <laughs> on the jokes and I'm seeing that persona is, uh, is calling you Papa. Hey, this yeah, is not your that. dad. <laughs> <laughs> he might be awesome, but you can't claim him as your dad. It's too late for that. Right. Without further ado, we said let's get started by... We, we've established that everything is okay. Everything is cool. And first of all, uh, this question has been working in the back of my mind when I looked at the time and date that we are today. I'm on holiday. This is a Sunday. You've got work tomorrow. What on God's name possessed you to agree to do this in the first place? <laughs> are you taken by, um, what is it called? Passion. I think this is awesome. So I want to say thank you very much for being here. Uh, the first part of every episode is getting to know our guests, the human beings behind the pseudos, the names that we all know. And we do that in two ways. The first one, well, let's start with that one, the presentation. I'm going to ask you, Manaya, first of all, to tell us about yourself in as much detail as you fancy. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Manaya. I am the a global content manager for Dofus at Akama. 
I joined Ankama in 2018 uh, to replace Ismar as the community manager. <clears throat> and I held that role for two years and I still stayed on DOFUS. I still stayed in communications. And uh, yeah, it's been six years. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Papino? Yeah, so for me, I'm what we call a video game producer at Ankama. Uh, I've joined Ankama uh, three years ago, if I recall correctly. And first, I worked on uh, Temporis, uh, the first one for the first retro as an intern for Ankama. And everything went good and really smoothly. So a little after that, I was part of One More Gate, um, a roguelite that we did in, at Ankama, and that would be but well, is available on Switch right now. And then Logan called me back when I was on One More Gate to come back on Dorfus. And then I've been part of every Temporis since then. And then became the producer of Dorfus, Dorfus Retro. That so, yeah. is awesome. That is awesome. That is really, really, really cool. Um, I can't help but think about when I was making this, um, you know, the poster that I was making in order to indicate and tell the world that you were coming on this podcast to have a conversation with us and everything. I've fed your images to an AI tool and I've asked it to reimagine you. And much to my surprise, your reactions to those images were spectacular. And then it hit me. <laughs> uh, that was definitely something I wanted to ask you guys about. Um, it's... Um, one of the first things that anybody notices about you, Manaya, let's start with you, is the hair color. And while researching you, I found that it tends to change over the years. The AI imagined <laughs> yes. it in purple. And somebody told me that you had a purple face. Can you tell us more about the style, the colors, and how the hair works? <laughs> oh, uh, this is nothing to do with Ankama. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, like I've been dyeing my hair since I was 16. Nice. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, so yeah, I kind of went through phases of dyeing it different colors as a, I suppose like anybody, because I like it in a way of expressing myself. Nice. And funny story, uh, last year, before the Japan Expo, mm -hmm. <laughs> my, my hairdresser was on holiday. So I went somewhere else and it was the day before my flight. And I ended up with this really, really ginger hair. And I'm like, I can't go to the Japan Expo like this. <laughs> but, but then I thought, well, let's role play an eye up. Why not? So <laughs> then I was, okay, it kind of grew on me. Let's stick to it. So I might stay with the with the orange for a little bit. Maybe one day I'll go back to the purple. Who knows? Nice, <laughs> nice, nice, nice. It definitely is scary that the AI was able to tell that about yourself. That's maybe something for us to think about. But, you know. The fact that you, uh, sorry, do you want to say something? No, just that Malaya is lucky enough to be able to <laughs> dye her hair. <laughs> like, I would love to do that, but hey, <laughs> make sure what wasn't on my, no, my no, side no, on this I one. Had, I had something completely <laughs> different for you. Um, some time ago, you came out in a, an emergency and come alive to explain what went wrong that time. I don't know if you remember it. But that yeah. raised you to legendary status in my eyes and the international community <laughs> as a whole. And when I thought you couldn't get any cooler than that, than that, when I passed your image through the AI, it came back with leather jackets. And I recently learned, I can't say how, that you've had the leather jacket phase in your youth. Can, I can you tell us more about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it was more in high school because my life in high school was equally separated between music and it was like a more grunge and rock and roll, you know, like Nirvana and stuff like that. That's awesome. Rugby and video games. And like everything just pointed out to be this leather jacket <laughs> that I wear a lot back in, back in time. <laughs> that is incredible. And still within the spirit of getting to know you guys, I thought um, within the company as a whole, uh, is it fair of me to say that you guys are a strong duo? You work well together. Yeah, we uh, like many all time in weeks is just speaking <laughs> as a duo. Like everything, every decision, everything that is happening in the overall either community or in the production phase, we have to talk a lot in order to have all of the information spread out in the team. So yeah. that's that's yeah. awesome. 
Uh, would you say that is due to the size of the team that you work in or do you have like a special bond that you want to tell us about how it formed within the company itself? I'll take that one. Uh, well, no, I, okay, I'll answer first and then I want to see what you answer, Papino. You might be in trouble <laughs> tomorrow morning. Um, I started working with Papino years ago. I think it was on the first uh, Tempest Retro. Mm -hmm. And um, between the, the sweet baritone voice that is very soothing, even in moments of stress or pressure, uh, we kind of, you know, you, you end up always finding people that you click with, whatever you do. Yes. And I really, I really appreciate his very calm and collected nature. And he's extremely funny, as you guys know. Uh, so we got to work together on that, even when he was on One More Gate for a little bit. Uh, when I went to the Japan Expo two years ago, he was there with One More Gate, and we were kind of having a little moments melting over. There was a, a kid playing One More Gate on his own on one of the computers, <laughs> and he was having the time of his life. And yeah, there was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and there was. Papino and I behind him melting, going, oh, my God, this is the cutest thing ever. Um, it really helps. It, it helps when you have uh, a good synergy uh, because at the end of the day, communication has to support production and vice versa, you know. Um, so it really helps to be a, a good duo. But, yeah, we need to keep each other informed of everything. I need to inform Papino of everything on the communication side. He keeps me up to date on the production side. Um, I think regardless of the size of the teams, it's important to have that duo, and I'm very lucky to have Papino. Go on, your Fabulous. turn now. I want to see. <laughs> on. I think the main thing that um, makes us a good duo is that we complete each other uh, work-wise. Like, uh, I'm... like. Manaya said, I'm more calm and, you know, like, uh, I keep my composure every time there's things happening or if we have to work with stress. But then Manaya will be the one that urges me, <laughs> the one that urges me to do things or to take responsibilities or on a few things. Like, for example, the, the live stream you, you spoke about, um, mm -hmm. it's something that I swear or I promise the community I would do. Yes. But when everything was happening, I was like, Oh shoot! I have so many things to do. What's you know the number one thing? And then you got money out like, tuck, tuck, tuck. <laughs> you promised something like go on, go on. Now, now you go. You go on stream. <laughs> and so yeah, like I, I knew yeah I knew I had this stream to do. I knew I had it, but you know you sometimes you have to prioritize something. And then Manaya is the right person for that. Of so, yeah. course, yeah. That, that sounds great. Sounds like it's the voice of accountability. You said, now mm -hmm. you must do. Uh, you yeah. have mentioned plentifully <laughs> one key aspect of everything that you do, which is communication. And it is something that is vital in the international community, as well as within the company itself that you work for. Because at the end of the day, the international community, while it speaks with English or using English, Everyone is from everywhere. Washington is from Lithuania. I'm from the UK. We've got people from the Netherlands. Australia is in the mix. It's mm -hmm. global. So we have to have communication in order to achieve anything, whether you want to play, get information or whatever. And this is one thing I've spotted in the two of you. And I will start with Manaya. I was absolutely smitten and surprised at the fact that I've seen you in a Crossmonaut uh, in the launch. It, you've done it in PTBR. And then the live was English. And then you work for a French company in France. Can you tell us about your relationship with languages? Um, I am very fortunate uh, that um, my parents have different nationalities. And uh, so automatically growing up, uh, there was two languages in my household. And as soon as I finished school, I decided to travel the world. And um, I've always been interested in languages. Um, but yeah, so I, 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 I can't take credit for, like many people that they've studied and invested their time in languages. I was just fortunate um, as a child to be exposed to three languages growing up. Mm -hmm. And we all know that the brain of a child is like a sponge. Yes. So, and now I'm still learning like I speak four languages, I'm 
been trying to learn a fifth for quite some time, but I'm really Ooh. struggling. Um, but yeah, languages is my thing. And being in the community, even playing Dofus, mm -hmm. I started in 2007. And even back then, it was already the international community, even though there was a ton of servers. Um, yeah, it just felt like a natural. It's like it's funny how life works, you know, like now <laughs> being a global content uh, manager for Dofus and caring and trying to think how we, can we translate this and even in English, but in an English that is accessible for non native English speakers. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Big task. And I do firmly believe you're up to it. If you speak four and you're going for five, you've got everything it takes to push it to the next level. But you know, best. <laughs> a lot more French people are following the global trend right now of learning English and speaking it. But very few people achieve the mastery that you have achieved on your own in order to be on, on a podcast, speak in English and be perfectly comfortable with it. And I wanted to ask you about what the motivations are. If there's say, say there's a French person here with us in the chat and they're seeing you do this, what can you tell us about your motivations and the basis that formed this uh, English mastery? Is it the gaming industry being in English? Is it just you on your own? What can you tell us about that? Um, well, it first started in high school, yeah, really like, you know, you have a few classes in English and then, I was fortunate enough to have a separation between people having a lower English and then the one being pretty good at it. And then I was in the pretty good class, I guess. And then we had a lot of challenges throughout the year. Mm -hmm. So that's the main year where I really improved my English. And then being a huge fan and gamer of MMORPGs, um, the more stuff you have speaking about games is in English. Yes. So you don't really have a choice. And the last thing, I guess, it was uh, in my final year of high school, we had a little bit of Game of Thrones, you know? <laughs> and so if you want to see the episode, the day it, it's really is, you have to be perfect in English. So yeah, yeah. like I didn't have choice. The content <laughs> made me good in English, I guess. Um, so, but like, I'm still learning. I improve every day and, you know, English is the language I speak the more, but I also love to learn other languages. So yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. I just had a question in passing with all this talk about duos, I couldn't help but think about the achievement called duo. And I don't know if people in chat know about this, but Manaya has a character in the game. She mentioned it earlier, an NPC that is an IOP named after her in the game. Does anybody know, first of all, where it is located? Do tell us in the chat if you do. And Papino's um, profile picture is a Sacrier, and it made me wonder, uh, do you guys still main these clubs? Do you still play while being at work? Is that something that you guys still do? Uh, yeah, if you want to go first. <laughs> I'll go first. And uh, this is a Sunday relaxed stream. So mm -hmm. I'm here with my cup of coffee, chilling out. Um, <laughs> I'll bring you behind the curtain with me. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I love playing Dofus. The problem that I faced, and I know this happens to other people in Ankama too, mm -hmm. um, you start playing like you finish work in the evening, you play or the weekend, and then you see something. It could be a little bug, or it could be a comment, or it could be a boss. Uh -huh. And straight away you go, okay, let me log my admin account and I'll sort that out. And the next thing you know, you're working. an hour and a half is gone <laughs> and you're working and you kind of go, no, no. Um, so I don't play as much as I would, um, oh. I would like. There's not, it's not a, some people ask me sometimes, like, don't you just get tired? Maybe you lose motivation because you work on Dofus, so you don't want to play Dofus. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't happen with me in the sense that I just don't play any games at the moment. Mm -hmm. It's just I try to get as much. We have such a big year ahead of us. Um, but no, I don't. Uh, I'm not playing anything at the moment. I have a list of games I want to play. Um, but if I don't play Dofus, I'm not gonna start something else Fair but, um, <laughs> we i i do but i don't have the time at the moment that ah, makes complete and i think everybody in chat can sort of relate to what you've said 
when you're young, you have 12 hours a day to grind blobs and cracklers and <laughs> get your XP done. But then realities of life catch up, responsibilities, and there's less, less. And sadly, that is one of the aspects that tends to give way for the responsibilities that take over. Fab, Papino, do you still play? And Sack <laughs> as well, Sack <Sacrier? laughs> I do still play, not as much as I would like to, but um, still I'm just a big video game fan, so I have to, you know, take some time to play other games and not just Dofus or even Dofus Retro. Yes. Um, so at the moment I play two other games, which are Baldur's Gate and uh, Planet Crafter. Ooh. I discovered a few, a few weeks ago and it's really good. Um, but then for Dofus, I mainly do the big events, you know, like either Temporis, I played for three weeks-ish. Um, shadow event. Uh, I did the shadow event that was really, really good. Yeah. So yeah, I still play, but mainly on big events. I can't gotcha. really allow myself to play every day. It's it's a bit harsh, but yeah, you have Fair to enough. do the choice. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. And um, I feel like we have pretty much asked you a lot of personal questions, your relationship with the game, uh, some quirks about you as as people. Um, one thing I have noticed that I thought, sort of thought to include as part of this getting to know you, which I wanted to phrase it first of all as a question to chat. Can you tell me what uh, Manaya does in the company and what um, Papino does? Because here's what I realized. Um, People still think that Manai is the community manager, and I think chat will give me <laughs> credence for that. And then when I realized what the job titles were for both of you, I was like, I felt like I knew less than what I knew after, before I read them. <laughs> and so I wanted to sort of give you the opportunity to just tell us roughly what does a day in the life of Manai at the Win Work look like, or a day in the life of Papino, a producer? What do you guys do on a normal day, let's say? Go first, Papino. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, so, so for me, my daily life is first. I try to read as much of the forum that I can. If I don't have enough time, I know the community managers will keep me informed. Mm -hmm. Then a huge part of my job is just to be sure everyone in the team has what they need and what they have to know to be able to pursue their task. Because in Dofus, uh, but also in other video games company, sometimes your game can be like a hundred people working on it or a thousand people working on it. Sometimes multiple company, like if you take Ubisoft, you have like three companies in three different countries so <laughs> it can be a pretty hard task so my main task is just to be sure everyone has what they need to work and everyone had the information to work on and then the last part of my job is to take decisions on pretty much everything <laughs> so you you are consulted for a lot of subjects either it's communication marketing production wise is this you know new asset good for the game? Is this game design direction proper for the game? Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of consulting in every subject of the game. So yeah, it's it's a job where you don't have really a lot of limitation of what you can do on the game, <laughs> honestly. That is great. I, I hope chat that you've got a better idea of what exactly Papino does. I think for me the takeaway is every decision goes by him. If anything big is going to change, it has to be approved through a chain of command, get through some people before it's validated to make sure it's right. Uh, is that a fair assessment, do you think, Papino? <laughs> or did I yeah, yeah, clearly, it? clearly. <laughs> that, that's my main job, but you know, that's also why we have to improve every day because the more people we are involved in Dofus, the more information you can lose, you can lose in the process. So that's also the main part of the job, yeah. That's great. Fabulous. Uh, Manaya, do you have something for us, something equivalent, so we can see what, what a day in your life looks like? Oh, a day in my life, uh, it's like a, every day is different. Um, because when it comes to communications, you have to measure everything. It's what was done, which means even if we communicate, or communicated on an update, mm -hmm. and it's passed and it's released and people are playing, I still want to make sure 
we keep an eye is everything going okay we don't just okay we're done move on next yeah um we also see what is currently happening whilst also keeping an eye on the future of what do we need to communicate next and plan for what's coming after does it fit the global communication strategy of the company so my day depends on the day of the week what month we are what update is next what update is currently in beta or release um so my job i i don't take offense by the way when people think that i'm a community manager just to be clear um <laughs> Uh, no, because I, I really don't want it to sound like um, it, it's still very linked to my job. I work on a daily basis with the community managers. Nice. Um, it's an amazing job. I have very fond memories of it. I still consider myself part of the CM team. Uh, I think they know that by now. Because um, even when we talk, I always say we, we, we. Um, but my job is to ensure that we have a direct open and transparent communication with the community um i develop uh with everybody that touches dofus the communication strategy for an event an update or even for the year and uh obviously i exchange a lot with papi papino on it like is my strategy matching with the release the content that we're going to release how we're going to communicate it to the company what are the main elements um with the cms we see what the feedback from the community was on that topic yes and uh, then we work with the different departments whether it is the copyright and the copyright team or the people that write the news articles the game design team who write the dev logs and the change logs the arts department who create all the visual assets the localization team that translates everything so things are published all at the same time. I'm more, if I have to say what's the easiest way to understand my job, I'm the person with the clipboard that walks around going, <laughs> hello, we need to have a meeting. I need this information and going back to the next person. I make sure everybody's in the loop. Um, I think that's pretty much it. That is awesome. I think I covered all the angles. Yeah. <laughs> So if I could just sort of summarize it in a very short way, you're the glue that ties everything together. The people make the updates. There are some people at the other end who needs to know about what has changed and how to get excited about it. And you sort of link it from both sides and give them a package that they can consume to get the information and be up to date. Is that fair? I try every day. I try to I do try. that. <laughs> That is good enough. That is amazing. Uh, just in passing, I'm conscious of time and we're very well, we're doing very well for time, aside from the very first 10 minutes where we got a bit late due to technical issues. Uh, and I was uh, wondering, this is a question that has researched a handful of times in the Ankama Live. And I've asked you about this, Papino, before, but um, please feel free to say no and we'll happily move on immediately after it. But would you like to address uh, the big elephant in the sort of Ankama room, whereby Logan has you've mentioned them earlier he had departed from the company which was big news for us gamers but we sort of couldn't appreciate there were lots more questions on our end than answers and we know that you know what is going on internally and you could sort of get us up to speed is that something you'd like to speak on yeah of course of course i uh, i'm i'm always available to address the concern the the community can have on such subject because it's a huge thing we can just you know do the ostrich and just like no we, we don't see anything and <laughs> so um for logan uh yeah he left the company a few months ago uh if i'm right yeah and it was something that was already planned within the company uh it's not something like we had the surprise one day to another that oh shoot logan isn't there anymore oh yeah um oh I think the, an ad went on. I see oh the chat. God. <laughs> Perfect timing. Perfect timing. So only three <laughs> just, people. Oh my yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they, they can watch the the <laughs> the VOD if they want. Yes, they will be able to, and I will post yeah. it as well. Uh, the final result I will post it on YouTube after this for sure. Yeah. 
Please but, carry um, on. <laughs> yeah, but for Logan, uh, it was already a few. It was yeah, already like six or seven months that he was not on the force anymore. Like okay. we saw him a few times on the Uncommon Life, but I took back the force in September last year. So it's almost in a few, yeah, in two months it will be a year. So it was already something planned. It was already something we we've been working on and every possession were were done with Logan. So yeah. Ah. The handovers. So he gave you all the, the keys to the, the house. All the keys, all the information. So yeah. I had a little surprises. <laughs> a little by, by little surprises. But as I said, like our job is technically limitless in the in the in the project. So I had a few surprises. <laughs> if you think like yeah, it was little subjects, so we didn't mention them. But it was really a great opportunity for me to work with him, uh, especially because he he's the one that hired me for the company. Like was when I was an intern, wow. I was working with Logan on everything, so it was a really great senior for me and. Yeah, that's why he, is, he was also really proud to be leaving the, the project for with me. Yeah, that sounds like a devastate, devastating departure, but at the same time, the handover was done into capable hands, which is yourself at the moment. And we're all thankful to have you here to tell us exactly what is happening and compliment the picture for us. Because as you know, we only read the headlines and the rest. Of course. And there's something that I want to get you all excited about. There is a topic later on that we'll talk about called myths. But where there is lack <laughs> of information, superstition finds a way to set roots mm -hmm. and propagate. And thank you ever so much for telling us, setting the narrative straight on that one, Papino. Right. I think I've done all the nice uh, get to know you guys, uh, easy, soft bits. Now I'm going to transition and invite um washington you all know him he's going to introduce himself as well the iron man the guy who invented the new play style within the game and he's going to lead the first round of questions with everybody here that you can see and the other thing is please do tell me if you want to take a break at any moment we'll happily pause everything um, get sorted and then we can resume but in the planning it's after uh, washington's questions that we are going to take a break so in about 20 minutes are we still okay with it everyone Yep. yep, perfect. Cool. cool, 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 cool. Right, so I'm going to invite the good old Washington into the house. And just one quick second, let me get you in on. Hello, Boom. hello, hello. Hello. Hi. How are you guys doing? Hello, doing good. good. Good to see you, good to hear you. And yeah, I'm very excited to be here. Um, I've kind of been nervous as well, uh, no matter maybe I'm a part host, but oh my God, it was stressing me out. Malt with such a good job. I'm seeing like a professional. So <laughs> without further ado, I will be asking uh, several questions to you guys. Uh, more maybe about the communication to Manaya and uh, about little modifications to the game itself to, for, to Popino. But uh, for myself, I want to introduce myself. I am Washington. Uh, I started Ironman Challenge a couple years ago. I'm a Dofus player for over 15 years, but I found myself alive in the game when I started Ironman. It's a personal challenge, nothing too crazy, nothing too big, but I'm very happy with my progress and I love updating people of what I do and maybe give them hope if they lost some interest in game. All right. So, Manaya, Unity. Let's talk about Unity. Uh, it's so wonderful. <laughs> Big topic. OK, OK. Massive. <laughs> I'm ready. It's a it's, it's massive uh, project that's coming in for everybody, you guys, and uh, of course, for us as well. So I want to talk about more like communications and a marketing aspect. Uh, before that, before jumping in, uh, what are your plans, upcoming plans for Unity? Please tell us as much as you can. I think I can. Um, okay. Um, how am I going to do this without spoiling anything, but give you hints? Um, I can tell you that uh, from a communications perspective, we start working on it last year. Um, 
there are like you guys know we had uh i think it was at the end of last year december we did an uncommon live stream and uh, we promised to come back to the community every month month and a half keep everyone updated on where we're at with unity so i can explain that we decided to transition a little bit our approach in the communications of those lives to go from static images to a bit more visual elements of the game and movement and animation uh, so that's been happening a lot more um there's a lot uh, coming um i there's the summary of the live that we did on thursday the summary should be published on tuesday and in it there's information that Papino shared um, that, for example, the next Unity Live will be on the 15th of July, yes. where uh, Papino and Laka will show the Unity fight that will be available at, at the Japan Expo. Mm. I don't know if I'm lagging. Uh, no, no. Can no, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. No, no, perfect. Perfect. yeah. Absolutely. Okay, sorry. Uh, by the way, I'm jinxed when it comes to technology, um, and this is no joke. So I'm pretty sure that it is my presence that kind of jinxed your setup at the start of the live. No, so my bad. Don't say that. No, um, no, 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 no. Thank you for being here. Don't say that. It's but <laughs> back to the Unity thing. So there are a lot of things on the pipeline uh, that I cannot share yet. I would love to, but I cannot. Uh, I can tell you that the live on the 15th, um, there's going to be more, there's going to be more content. In terms of the overall strategy for Unity, my goal is just to make sure that every community is well-informed, is um, engaged and excited about the porting. And I think this wow. is as much as I could tell you right now Maybe in a couple of months, we could have another, you know, podcast over a cup of coffee where I could give you a little bit more. That um, sounds awesome. That, thank you very much for doing what you can with what you have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, um, you mentioned the convention. Uh, what is it? Can you tell us more about it? Why should we get so excited about it? Okay, I mentioned Japan Expo, but indeed... Uh, there is a convention. A thing. Yeah. <laughs> there was a little video shared uh, this week, I think it was on Wednesday, mm -hmm. confirming the return of the Ankama convention after 10 years. It's been 10 years. And um, wow. I don't know if everyone watched it to the very, very, very end, but the date, it's going to be in Roubaix. So where Ankama is based, and it's uh, from the 30th of August to the 1st of September. I will be there. Uh, Papino will be there, I'm sure. No, yep. no surprise Everybody who there. wants Manaya's autograph, let's go to the convention. <laughs> Clearly. Well, the, the Save thing, the date. Uh, why should you go there? Uh, this, this is the hard part about getting really, really, really excited and really, really wanted to share stuff and not being able to. Oh, um, absolutely. Not right now. Okay. I can't. Uh, I need to fight. Um, no, I, I really would love to. Uh, I'm sure more details are going to be shared closer to the date. Um, but let's just say it's in Roubaix, where Ancam is based, and that's that's huge. The convention of the 10th anniversary of Dofus was in Lille. Uh, I don't know, did you guys? But you guys were playing Dofus already at the time, right? Yeah, I think so. I think so, most of us. <clears throat> but in no way able to travel to France, being that young and not having any money. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but now is the time. Yes. Now it's the time. Now it's the time, <laughs> indeed. Yes. Uh, did I did I uh, read that correctly? Are all entries for free this time to celebrate the twenty year anniversary? Or did I just imagine it? I think I saw that passing too. Hmm? Um, <laughs> I think that's true. Mm -hmm. But I'm not certain. So there you go. Even being a <laughs> global content manager for Dofus, it doesn't mean that you have all the information. Fair enough. Fair uh, enough. 
maybe it was shared with me. I'm going to be very honest with you guys. Maybe this was shared with me and I'm just derping right now. And not no, it's all right. Don't worry about um, it. <laughs> Washington. It happens. Yeah, what's up, Mold? Yep. Keep, keep going. Sorry about the interruption. Oh, it's fine. Now, uh, um, I have some uh, question to Manaya again. Uh, I myself uh, working in a marketing department um, and I remember there was a prime advertorial and a commercial value in Dofus like very, very long time ago. And throughout the, throughout the timeline, we sort of faded. Uh, my question would be, is there any plans to revive the uh, advertorials? You're, break, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh. Um, hello, hello. I can't hear your question. Hang on. Again, it might be my internet. One sec. Uh how are we doing? Because it's like you're turning robotic to me. So I know okay. you were talking, but it's um it's fine. Don't don't worry about it. I can okay. always repeat the question. Yeah, yeah, start <laughs> Let's again. do it. Try again, try again. I think it's uh, better. Can you now. hear me? Yeah, okay. So um as I said, I'm working in the marketing department. Uh so just quick question. Uh considering the prime years of advertorials and commercials uh, back in like, I don't know, 15 years of Dofus. Mm -hmm. uh, do you, is there any plans to advertise the Unity once and bring back more people, or bring new people back to Dofus and increase the, uh, the player base? Okay, so if I understood your question correctly, you're asking me if there are any plans for the acquisition of new players for the release of yep. Unity. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that right now my focus, uh, and Ankama's focus, is primarily on the existing community that stayed with us. Yep. Um, because we we recognize very well that since we started working on the porting to Unity, this has had an impact on how much new content we released into the game for you guys. Um, let's call a spade a spade. Um, and we've always been extremely transparent with our community that we aren't able to do this because majority of the team is working on the porting. Um, so our focus right now is finalize the, the strategy because just so we're clear, a communication strategy uh, for something of this magnitude, it doesn't stop. Like the end date is not the release to Unity because after the release to Unity, the game goes on and we need to, you know, now that we're on Unity, what does that mean? How do we translate? You, do you know what I'm saying? It's not a break of one strategy into the release and then once we're on Unity, this is a completely different strategy. So right now we're uh, fine tuning uh the strategy until december because again every department is concerned we're talking yep. production team we're talking marketing we're talking user acquisition we're talking localization we're talking support as well um uh video editing all that um so right now like user acquisition i don't do uh, there is a specific team dedicated to that, and I work with them when I establish the communication strategy for an update or for a temporary edition and whatever. So it's just to ensure that our initiatives, there's a synergy between them. Uh, for Unity, I'm sure there are going to be plans for it. That's not what I work on. But of course, there will be plans at a later stage. Right now, my focus is on the existing communication of we're now in June, we have the beta in August, we still have the release set for December. I'm not concentrating on the acquisition of new players during the beta. Loud and clear. Absolutely. Thank enough. you for your answer. Yeah. That settles me right down. And I'm, I'm, anything anymore. I'm not stressful anymore about uh, uh, advertising or Adolphus. <laughs> All right. Um, now, maybe on a more of a creative but technical note to Poppinot. Um, we know you played World of Warcraft in a day and you mm -hmm. expressed your um, enthusiasm about modifications of the game. 
uh, Dofus have modifications as well, like for example several servers, servers as a shadow server and Temporis to coming out as like a new approach of the game. So, and myself, maybe I'm playing on a normal servers, but it's my personal challenge to play as an Iron Man. Oh, I'm doing this, like no, no help, no markets, uh, everything by myself. Um, but have you ever considered implementing something similar into the game of Dofus? Would it be hard to implement something like that? Can you maybe uh, explain more of the technical side to the people that are watching that maybe have idea or maybe they want to try something more out of the broad aspect? <laughs> yeah, of course, Mike. Um, cool. As I said earlier, I played a lot of the shadow events and that's why we tried it because on my free time, I also played a lot of the hardcore version of World of Warcraft on Classic. I also tend to play hardcore on Diablo, if, if I have time to Ooh. play in Diablo. Um, so this kind of gameplay is always something appealing to me. It's always something that I like. And that's also why we tried it on the Shadow server, because we wanted to try two main things. One was like to try a seasonal type of event uh, because you know you could try to have a new experience, have a new type of character, and it could be a season that you can have in other MMORPGs or other game. So it's something we wanted to try out, and also we wanted to try new modification in the game um, because historically in Dorfos we had several type of servers. Be even before multi-account and solo accounts server, but we had Epic and Heroic servers. Yeah. Even though Heroic, I, I want to address another elephant in the room, but <laughs> Heroic is not going to come back. Sorry, guys. It's oh. another question, another time, cool. maybe later during the live stream, but yeah. it's not something that we plan to do right now. Okay. Um, but that's also why we wanted to uh, try the Shadow server with modifications, because it was the perfect opportunity. And for new modifications in the game, it's something we'll we are always open about. Uh, for the event on the Shadow server, it was something that a streamer, a content creator, bring, brought to us. And we were like, yeah, yeah, it's a good idea. It's something we want to try. So let's go. Why not? So if we have, you know, community-wise, something everyone wants to try, or if, if there is any good ideas, we will take them. We will try them, of course. But once again, shadow the shadow event was something we could try because there were a community that there was a community that wanted to try it. You know, it wasn't an event for like 10, 20, 100 people. It was more than that. It was an entire server that wanted to try it, try it, and even players from the already playing the game wanted to try it out, try it out. So yeah, that's why. Wow. So, so if uh, Washington carries on at this pace of trying to recruit everyone to his play style, all of those <laughs> will become Iron yep. Man. Is that what I'm getting now? Oh my yeah, God. Oh minute? my God. <laughs> Guys, petition, petition in the chat now. <laughs> Panic, everyone. Washington server. <laughs> Brilliant. That's, that's wonderful. I think a lot of people uh, are excited about this. Nobody probably asked you uh, from the community about uh, uh, implementing new game modes or something like that, but that's a wonderful answer. That's, that's, that's actually wonderful. Thank you for your answer, Papino. Uh, back to Manaya, to be honest. Um, I mean, uh, last questions from me, uh, and, and we, you can go move on with Malt. And uh, yeah, for Manaya. <laughs> so you were a player before, and you kind of player still so um please explain for us 25 to 30 year olds and over that have adult lives real life <laughs> struggles and uh yeah how can we uh play the game and how can we adjust everything uh if like uh resources and specific recipes are very hard to grind and it's still a grindy game so uh, is there a possibility to make recipes uh, somewhat easier or like simpler? Because <laughs> I'm not considering the age; I'm just considering maybe the time of the of our lives. So, 
if my question was clear to you, sorry, I'm. Uh, I'll happily yeah, rephrase sorry. it if you want. But it, I, yeah, it was hard to decide. I'm making a decision right now that when he goes 25 to 30, he's actually including me in that group. That's the that's what <laughs> I'm choosing to believe. So that's number one. He's um, charming, isn't he? <laughs> um, I it, like I'm gonna say how I interpret it, and then you tell me if I'm wrong, and maybe we can uh, uh, iron it out. Uh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> basically, you find that the grind, like the recipe itself for, for crafting, the grind needed behind it is a little bit too time consuming, especially when as an adult, you have other responsibilities, you don't have as much free time. Mm -hmm. um, number one, you're asking the wrong person because I agree with you, right, as a player. But um, is there a possibility to uh, simplify the recipes? Papi, no, you're going to jump in and correct me in my assumption. I do believe this is something that the game design team is ongoingly reassessing. And it's very difficult to be able to change all recipes uh, in one go. So we have kind of rebalanced over the years by level brackets some recipes if i'm not mistaken and that just because we haven't done everything it doesn't mean that the work is finished but it's something that the game design team still works on right or am i wrong no you're right uh, that's also something we wanted to see with the shadow server because the latest new servers or fresh starts we had were temporaries so it was not a really a real fresh start server, you know, like you you will loot every items, you can drop every easily because it's multiplied by three. So it's not a real server, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's also why we wanted to to see on the shadow server how much resources and items were people generating throughout the adventure. And we had a lot of data. And there's a lot of things we want to change for the Unity launch <laughs> because we knew it would be painful at some levels or for some kind of stuff. And also because everyone is playing the same thing because everyone at low level will play Agility because the, I don't know the name in English, but Tofufu and Toadi are way too strong. Yeah, so yeah. everyone is playing that, no questions asked. Then you will go to um, to the newest panoply uh, stuff items because the overall stats are way too strong compared to everything we did for the last ten years. So you know things like that are not the proper experience for a new fresh start server. And also the last thing that is really important is that we didn't speak about it yet, but. For Unity, there will be a long going beta for yeah. us and for you to test out everything. Yeah. If um, players complain about the same thing, if data is bad on a few sides of the game, the beta is here to change everything before the new start server. So, yeah. That's awesome. That is brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. Does for that, that answer your question properly? Um... Yes. Okay. Absolutely. I apologize for my phrasing. It was I, I choked a little bit, <laughs> but no, uh, no, no. Uh, no, I have a. Can we? I want to take a moment. If you guys don't mind, I'm hijacking your podcast for two seconds. Sure, take That's your time. Fine. That's fine. Um, pure transparency to the viewers. When we started to do the the sound checks, I was extremely nervous, and uh, Washington here. Like you keep talking about not being sure with your words. Um, my, my, me not being sure I understood your question was nothing to do with your words. It was to do with my nerves of being nervous enough. I, can I answer the question properly? You don't have to apologize. You ask your question. Even back me up here, single malt. Back me up. Yeah, it's, it's I, okay. I said okay. this. I said this every time, and I will repeat it today. I cannot tolerate anyone using a second or third or fourth language apologizing for their bad language. You are already way ahead of the curve doing something remarkable. So you should find pride in that. And there is no room for anyone to apologize for using the wrong word in my podcast, at least. Fantastic. Thank you very much for rephrasing it as best as you could. 
and thank you for all of your efforts to answer the question in a satisfactory manner. And we all know how hard it is to satisfy Iron Man, who seeks difficulty in everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just conscious. Uh, we've got a couple of minutes before we go on break. And I'm conscious that because we have two guests, I want both of them to have equal talk time. And I wanted to pose a very quick question to Papino, just so you can uh, sort of wrap up the last two minutes. Um, the question I wanted to ask you is uh, the shadow you said it was a test for a couple of ideas that you had. Did it open your appetite for more sort of testing of this nature? Can we see more of it in the future? Oh, gosh. Uh, and I are already shaking. Yes, she wants to see more. Um, Do you want to see more? <laughs> yeah, honestly, it was such a great experience, even though for my really player heart, like mm -hmm. I love this event so much. I want to do so many of them, but you know, we don't have the time, honestly. <laughs> we have to, to finish and wrap up Unity. It's our main concern right now. Um, but I would love I would love to have the occasion to do something similar in the future or to do a real seasonal event and not just temporaries. Because technically, temporaries is our way to do seasonal events. But the thing I don't like or I dislike about temporaries is that you abandon your server. You don't play your character anymore. You don't play on yes. your server anymore. And then mm. everything feels empty for a few weeks mm. when the temporary launches. And as once, once, again, once again, as an MMORPG fan, I don't like when a world feels empty because you don't have enough people in it. Yeah. So that's also why I want to try a real seasonal event. It was a tryout with the shadow server so mm -hmm. we will see spectacular thank you for that um if you have nothing else to add in the meantime manaya papino should we take a 10 minute break so we can reconvene have some water feel fresh and then come back for the second round with eslix yeah, thank you so much so far and thank you. see you in <laughs> thank you guys i shall transition over Whoa. Oop, and I think we are back. The cameras are all refreshing. The internet is doing its thing in the background, so it might be a while before we come back. <laughs> uh, I have some good news and bad news for everyone listening. Uh, the good news is we're continuing the conversation. The bad news is Aslix does not have a hat on. So, and he's about to take over this next part. <laughs> Hold on, let me unmute. Yep, up, and we should be good to go. Right. Without further ado, Eslix, you want to introduce yourself, ask your questions, have a conversation? Yes. So, hello, everyone. Um, hopefully, everyone can hear me all right. So, uh, I am, uh, yeah, Eslix Gaming, as you all know. Um, we've probably got some new people in the chat that might not have uh, heard of me. So, yeah, I've been uh, playing for Dofus for about 18 years now, since uh, 2007. Um, been doing English content for about three years now, streaming for about a year, a year and a half. So, uh, yeah, so that's about uh, me, pretty much. <laughs> if you guys want to know anything about me, then you can always hit me up on Discord or uh, Twitch. But uh, anyways, let's go uh, into the important stuff, the questions that we have. We've got four questions prepared for my part. Um, Let's start out with the first question for Manaya. And in the meantime, I think uh, Malt will put an image on the screen so you know what I will be talking about. Uh, and that is about um, certain maps where, um, where you can go to. And if you go there, then you will get uh, spammed by a lot of messages um, from random people. And we call them bots. Um, this usually happens when you go to Astro Top, Bonta Marketplaces, Brockman Marketplaces, uh, like the busy maps, pretty much. Um, question to you How does Ankama go about this? Um, what are your plans, pretty much, to combat this? Are we talking about bots generically, or are you talking about the spam bots specifically? Uh, more about the, this question is more about the spam bots, yes. Okay, um, I'm sure you guys know that there are moderators in game um, and the moderators, uh, I know in the past they were a lot more visible. Um, 
but just because you don't see a moderator in game doesn't mean they're not there. Um, we do have moderators themselves that go and do sweeps when they're reporters and they do sanction those accounts. Uh, with regards to how we detect in terms of the system, uh, is there a detection for that kind of bot? I would actually hand over to Papino because I'm afraid <laughs> of giving an incorrect answer or incomplete answer to that. Um, I can tell you the only thing I will add is none of us are strangers to logging on and actually doing a sweep ourselves every now and again um, to clean bots mm -hmm. or nuisance in any MMORPG. Mm -hmm. Whatever we do in terms of tools or processes and manual work, it's a, it's a vicious cycle. And it's always been the case. And it's not just Ophus. It's every single MMO, as you guys know, in the in the gaming industry, uh, whatever we do, we develop a new tool. It makes it difficult for them. They find ways to bypass or they develop new tools to go incognito. We take time and it's just, it's a, a never ending circle. But maybe, I don't know, Papino, can we, can you talk about this in more detail? I know we can't give specifics because mm -hmm. the moment we give specifics about what we do, mm -hmm. we're giving tools to people that do, yeah, yeah they know exactly what it is. Yeah. We don't want that. No, I'm afraid, so. that's what I'm afraid of doing. If yeah. I go into much detail and I give giving something away, so I'm going to yeah. let the expert go, no, 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 Manaya, let me handle this. Um, yeah, but that's... One specific thing uh, in the screenshot you, you showed um, that we can comment is that if we look closely, like the word Kamas isn't spelled right at all. Oh. Like it, it was Kabas, if I remember, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing is that we have. Kabas. Yeah, you're absolutely we, right. Yeah, yeah. We, we have various tools in the game to fight boating, either it's spam bots or, you know, uh, jobs or everything, even Colosseum. Um, but for this one specifically, we have a tool that will ban specifically some type of messages. And these spams have just evolved throughout the year because if you go back like two years ago, I guess, you will have the word Kamas spelled right because mm -hmm. the tool wasn't in place yet but if you just try to <laughs> go back and just pick a few messages you will see that the vocabulary is, is evolving throughout the year and it will keep evolving because our algorithm just need to learn what is the new phrases what is the new vo vocabulary that they're using so we are fighting Otherwise, you would not have these kind of messages. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a valid, valid point. Yeah. So um, a, a follow up to this pretty much like uh, I think you mentioned it a little bit during the Uncommon Life like uh, last week about the anti cheat being on a hold right now. Um, can you talk us a little bit more uh, to the English community who might have not watched the Uncommon Life or might have not heard about it? What is uh, what are Ankama's plans about the anti-cheat system, um, maybe after when Unity comes? Yeah, so uh, for the easy anti-cheat, it's something we tried out on the 2.70 update, uh, on the beta, not on the update properly, but on the beta. And every de data we had and every concerns the community had was right technically <laughs> like there was so many issues with the easy anti-cheats uh, especially if you were multi-accounting in the game it was really hard to multi-account um there was so many bugs in the game because of easy anti-cheats on the beta it was really bad um having an anti-cheat on the kernel level uh, it's more technical but it's hard for Dofus for the Flash version. So at this point in time, we were like, okay, easy anti-cheat on Flash isn't a good way to fight botting or cheating in the game. So we were postponing it for the Unity launch of the game. Mm -hmm. But then something else happened is that uh, easy anti-cheat had been added in uh, a few games like Apex, Sea of Thieves, 
and other games like that. Mm -hmm. And especially because I play Sea of Thieves uh, <laughs> sometimes in the week, um, the the update that embarks the um, easy anti cheat is really bad, really bad. Like I couldn't play as a player. I couldn't play Sea of Thieves for like three weeks <gasps> because the update was really bad. The game was just crashing every. 30 to 40 minutes. So even though you want to play five hours, every 30 minutes you, you can just crash it. You can do anything, and you're just like, okay, you know what? I know why it did crashing. It's because it's anti cheat, but you can do anything. Mm. And Apex, Apex is the same. Like the game is way less stable. You still have bots. You still have cheaters, even though you have easy anti cheat on your game. So you're like your performance of the game are really bad or really low. And even with that, you still have cheaters in the game. So <laughs> it's not it's not a good a good way to, to fight that. It's My God. so that's why is anti cheat is not a solution we want to deploy with Dolphus anymore. But uh, we have a few things going on about cheating in the game and it's something I really can't go in it's detail fine. right now because it will give some too much detail for yeah, them. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Please don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is an awesome answer. Yeah. The um, I yeah. wanted to emphasize this issue is um, cheaters are some of the most informed people. So they keep on top of updates yeah. that we players might not even know about. So technological advances and things like that. So given mm -hmm. details is while we want to know, given any sort of detail, we'll just give them a big headway and they can just mm -hmm. get ahead of the solution before you even implement it. So that's definitely understandable and reassuring that there are some other things that are being viewed that don't have, at least don't have the possibility on paper to ruin the game for three weeks. I can't imagine not being able to log in for three weeks. I'd lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. And also because they were launching on Xbox too. So, you know, oh, yeah, they yeah, had yeah, yeah. so many concerns about, about so many things, but I know a few, uh, less part of the community also speaks about Vanguard, mm -hmm. the anti-cheat system of Riot, but it's something they do in-house. You know, it's only something for Riot games. It's not something that, that we deploy for other games. So Riot is a multi-billionaire company. They have so many people working yeah, yeah, yeah. on the games. Mm -hmm. We are just on camera. We are really little. <laughs> <laughs> and so having a solution like Vanguard, I would love to have something like that. But that's also something that um, you won't be able to play anything else apart from Dofus once it launches. That yeah. was one of the concerns about Easy Anti Cheat. You know, you couldn't have Dofus on one screen and maybe something else on another another screen for, for a game. So that's why Easy Anti Cheat wasn't a proper solution for for the game. But yeah, there's. Some other anti cheat in the market, but not so much. And we have other plans for Unity. We won't do something like that. We will go, we are switching our way to address that. Awesome. Thank you. I think that was a very in depth answer. Um, One yeah. last, maybe, Aslix? Um, yes. So um, recently, um, well, as you guys know, me, uh, I did the new uh, um, the new team uh, starting from scratch. Uh, I remember Washington did it as well. Some other streamers have done it in the past. But we are people with years and years of knowledge. So for us, it is pretty simple to start over from scratch in progress. Recently, I've actually uh, watched a fully, like, completely new player stream, uh, Dofus. And I was actually quite um, interested by how he was experiencing the game as a new player, not having all the knowledge in the game. And that brings me to questing. Um, most players actually use uh, third-party websites like Dofus Wiki, Dofus Poodle and Noobs to guide them through quests. Um, how does Ankama actually look towards this? Is there something that they want to change in the future, make questing in-game more clear? Um, so that people don't have to rely on other websites and it's also more accessible for newer players. Uh, so about that, there's 
one big feature we are adding in Unity because that's also something I don't like. Like I've been playing Dofus for I think as long as you guys. I've been I've been on the game since 2007, I guess. So um, it's something I did so many times to just quest on my screen on the left and have Dofus Poly Noob on the right and just you know <laughs> going back and forth, just seeing everything happening because I didn't want to lose time because an MMORPG is just time management, yeah. <laughs> basically. So you don't want to, to take too much time on quests. <laughs> so for the facility, we are trying, well, we are adding a feature and we'll see if it goes the way we plan. But on the dialogue boxes on the UI, we are adding a few um, a few pictures just to a uh, few icons on the dialogues um, answers from the NPC. So you will know in advance if it launches a fight, if it's an exchange, if you need to bring back resources or things like that. Like we try to, with Unity, to have more in-depth details from the quest directly on the dialogue boxes. So it's something, it's you know information that we, you will have in the game and not provided in the first point of only. The only exceptions, well, there's a few exceptions, for example, like the um, uh, the bridge keeper at Otomai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, since you have to think for yourself, uh, the you know, <laughs> how to <laughs> answer mm -hmm. this one, yeah, this one will yeah. not have uh, the icons just yeah. to, to show, like, if you <laughs> answer this one, you will die. No, this uh... one are just, you know, a bit of fun and a bit of teasing for the players. Mm -hmm. But everything else will have the indication if it launches a fight, if you have to come back, if you have to go somewhere else, something like that, yeah. Awesome. I think that was just an inside joke between Papino and all of the player base. He wanted that to be in place. <laughs> <laughs> that is remarkable. Thank you very much for such a thorough uh, reply. Um, I'm also conscious that uh, Manai didn't have an equal speaking time uh, with Eslix just now. And I'm sort of thinking, um, would you like to add another question, but direct it to Manai, a very quick yes. one maybe? Yes, I've got a, a quick, quick question left sure for, uh, sure specifically for Namanaya. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I think um, it was during wait, what was it? That, no, some time ago, where uh, there were some server issues. Um, I think with an event, and there was like a um, a quick little um, like bonus event uh, during the weekend where we could grind thingies for the ochre quest. Mm -hmm. um, I got a question regarding these type of events. Is there like a way we could implement some kind of token where people could activate this type of event for themselves, but on the day they can actually play? So instead of having it for everyone during the weekend, um, and some people might not even be playing during the weekend, we can actually choose when to like activate this token to still benefit from an event, whether it's going to be Tingy or XP bonus or anything like that. We did like say that. for Manaya, didn't we? So I, think we did. I was going to say, say you you're going to get me in so much trouble. <laughs> Hope, hopefully. I could hear Papino yeah. going, I really want to see how she's going to answer this one. <laughs> I was so curious. <laughs> but go on, answer. <laughs> Let the man have his fun as well. Oh, I'm sorry, I have technical difficulty. Can you hear <laughs> What? Oh, you're freaking out. Oh, shit. It's a tunnel. She's going under the tunnel. Very good no. question, though. Like, don't take me wrong. The question is extremely valid. And uh, it's to that people. Oh, oh sounds. Sorry. Yep. Sorry, Sam. Um, but yes, um, this is a question that we've seen across all communities whenever we activate this event. Uh, because even though when we decide to do this event, it's like a compensation when there's a lot of uh, technical issues. So we activate this event kind of as a gesture of good faith. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we always try to see which are the dates that would suit the majority of the community. But we are fully aware that other people might have already plans or they're working during the weekend and so on. Um, so I've seen this question asked before. And it is a valid question, um, but I am too scared of giving the wrong answer. 
And my nerves are kind of making me back out quite a bit and go, no, no, let's not waste what. the community's time. Can I give Papino, just a, a please little take exit. over. Papino, can you just give us a sort of vague answer, like a yes, no, without getting into too much detail, just for the sake of time, please. Yeah, okay. Uh, then, yes, it's doable. It's not the thing we want to do in the next few weeks, but yes, we can do it. Oof. Okay. Good answer. Oof, good answer. You like that one, Slix, didn't you? I like that one. I don't even if it's like <laughs> for the next year or if it's a plan for the future. I'm happy it's, with that. At and least I think, the, communi I think the community is happy with that as well. Okay, fair enough. So, Absolutely. Fair I want to thank you for your time, for my part, and I want to quickly do a quick shout out to the Dutch community. Um, we have a Discord. So if there's any Dutch people in the chat that want to part, be part of that, small community, but we are still playing Dutch people, yes. This is unscripted. <laughs> this is just Eslix going rogue, but I like the impulse Dutch community. You know where to find Eslix. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much you, for Eslix. passing by. I Thank think you. we're going to transition into our last um, content creator that is going to pop by, ask his questions as well. And I hope we can find a better balance this time. We tried our best, Manaya. Apologies for that. We have more no, questions than time. But I've tried to sort of keep the balance so both of you have equal speaking time and have equal fun, if I could say so. Mr. Black, do you want to introduce yourself for us quickly? Okay. Uh, so I am Mr. Black. Um, some people might know it as Mr. Black Dofus. Um, primarily more of a Twitch a streamer more than a YouTube content creator for now. I've uh, been playing Dofa since, well, I think it was right, the day I left school. So that would be 2006, something like that. So yeah, about 17 or 18 years. That's a long time. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, and just very quickly, yeah, Mr. Black, my... I've noticed that you have a plushie. Can you show us what happens? The age-old question what happens when a shram casts invisibility on a sadi what uh, happens give me <laughs> i can't believe he wasn't ready for this one <laughs> we've rehearsed we've practiced <laughs> no, no, Jack, no, please no. Stop this. we can't this, let this one slide <laughs> okay so i put this one on just for washington okay so that's gonna sit right here just for him okay, uh, okay so you get a shram on the same map as a sadi Invisibility, let's go! Disappears. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, I, I absolutely love it. Uh, Thank you very much for it. that. Ah, very, very welcome. Uh, they're going to sit right there for now. Uh, but yeah, um, very, very happy to be here. I suppose what, having all the community come in and pose all these questions forward is absolutely fantastic, especially from one of the smallest communities as well. Um, so if it's all right with you, I'd probably like to just get on with my first question. Please. Go on. Okay. Go. So Manaya, uh, first one is for yourself. Uh, so uh, during the last uh, Cosmonaut, uh, and Karma actually apologized about the English, um, um, the English translation only being available uh, through an auto CC. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and the summary of that actually came around about a week later, but, but then it was a bit too late. Um, but what about providing English translations and summaries for change logs have proven difficult for Encarma over the last 20 years? Okay. Um, I think there's a two part to that question. Uh, one thing we're talking about covering live content. And the other one is, like you said, summary of change logs, you know. So I will address both uh, separately, if that's okay with you. And I'm hoping that yeah, with the explanation do. I'm going to give you, it'll make sense, okay? Yeah, uh, so first of all, I'm going to give a bit of back. Maybe everybody already knows this, but just in case, let's be thorough. Mm -hmm. um, Ankama is a French company, first and foremost. Um, the great majority of the employees French natives and let's not also forget Ancam is a very very small company mm -hmm. right we're talking an average of across the board 300 people that doesn't mean 300 people on Dofus it means 300 people for all the games edition staff like internal departments like IT um, HR, accountants, um, and camera shop, whatever. 
-hmm. financed exactly. Uh, so when Encarnet started, um, and maybe some of you have watched uh, Todd in interviews, how they never expected when they did Dofus that it would blow up and then that it would even reach international um, players or the international market. The thing about Ankama is uh, when we started doing the Ankama live stream, it was what was being done out there. It was a new platform. It was a new opportunity to reach the community. But our employees don't really speak other languages. So obviously, if we do an Ankama live, the content is going to be in French. Um, to do live translations, uh, we had a while back, we had Jin that uh, you guys remember with the whole back to French uh, yes. hashtag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Fantastic. And English. Jin would do <laughs> little recaps. And sometimes even, even though that was great, we knew it wasn't sufficient because uh, when he was doing live streams with Logan, Logan would talk for like four or five minutes and then Jin would kind of do a one minute recap. So, but we knew that was already a step in the right direction. The problem is, or the challenge is, we don't have people that have that level of uh, fluency or mastering of the language. And when we do for one, we did English, but let's not forget we also have the Spanish community and the Portuguese community as well yeah. to consider. That was not a, uh, Jin during the recap was not the ultimate solution in our eyes. It was a step in the right direction, but it was still a lot of work to do. Uh, second of all, I know single malt can, and this is actually, I'm not sure if people are aware of this. What single malt can do where he's live and he listens to the French and Kama live stream and he just interprets like this is a, I don't know if you're aware of how lucky, like it's a talent, it's a skill set. It's not easy to do, yeah. and I'm unable to do it. I've tried. <laughs> I actually have tried, and I get so much in my head, and I'm trying to fumble more words. My brain is looking for synonyms. I already missed two sentences. So what single mod can do is amazing. To be able to just, you know, focus, listen, and talk at the same time, that's a full-time job. Like, there are people that do that as a job. And uh, you have that in the European Commission, you know, you have interpreters at the top the UN. Uh, of the assembly and the UN as well. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a bit of a challenge for us. Uh, it means recruiting people, but you can't just recruit people that can interpret. You need people that master and the knowledge of the game. Uh, I don't know if you, this is just a little side, uh, side step, but I'm hoping it serves as a good uh, example. Some of you might have remembered a uh, while we did, um, I think it was during COVID, uh, we started to do, um, how do you say it? How do you call it in English? Can you it's say it in French? In, uh, French sign language, you know, oh, yeah, it yeah, has yeah. an interpreter sign during live streams. Mm -hmm. And that required a lot of preparation as well. So we had Jin that would have to spend a day with them to explain everything that was going to be said during the live stream and explain the context. What is an enutroph? What's a dofus? What, what do you mean? Uh, what are pods? What's prospecting? Wow. Uh, so finding somebody to do the interpretation or a quick back to French, it's not just the language knowledge that is needed, right? I don't know what you're doing. You did this, sorry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Did you I'm want to say something pointing, to me? Point, point, no, I'm just pointing up to Malt. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, please, um, please, don't embarrass me. Don't embarrass me. Let, <laughs> let Manai answer a question. Uh, it's a difficult thing. Yeah. And finding the people with the right set of skills and combination with game knowledge is incredibly difficult. And remember, you don't just hire someone who lives in the UK when you're in France. <laughs> and that works in finance. It. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the second thing, so we knew this was a challenge. The automated subtitles, we've tried so many different things and we're not demotivated. It's a little bit like everything that is a failure, to, uh, we see it as it's just an extra step in the right direction. It's like, okay, this doesn't work. Okay, we now know, let's move on. So at the moment, uh, this started recently, we activated another plugin 
Like we, we used to have automatically the English subtitles and that was a bit of a mess. Uh, now we found one that allows the viewer to choose what language they want the subtitles in. So it's no longer just English for the English speaking community, there's Spanish and Portuguese as well. But I'm sure we all are in agreement that when you have multiple people on live and the automatic tool can't detect three people, the sentences that come out are insane. It, it's insane. Yeah. Um, so we're not, we're not super satisfied with the results. We're not. We know we need to find a solution. Um, the alternative to that is to pre-record a video content in-house. But that also brings an extra set of challenges. So we lose that direct connection with the community, uh, that natural side of an Ankama live stream. Do you know what I mean? Like being like we're live, it's not rehearsed. It's just like we're just being natural and transparent. Doing the video would require writing a script, um, sending it to localization to then prepare subtitles, upload it and share. And that would kind of prolong all the, the time that we need to work on it. With the Ankama live stream at the moment, we need to find what is, what is efficient within our time and resource restrictions. So sometimes we have done the, the, the pre-recorded content. Mm -hmm. um, we're happy with it, but we need to find something better. Now, we did try uh, a while back with the uh, with the CMs. It was myself for the English, mm -hmm. uh, Leah Far for the Portuguese Brazilian, and Genki for the Spanish. That while the production team would present the new content live on the Ankama live stream, we're live at the same time on the content creators platform, presenting exactly the same content. That requires a lot of preparation as well from our side. So in regards to the English translations for the live, it's tough. I'd be happy to work with like you guys if you have ideas and if you want to test stuff with me, um, we can see what could be done. Maybe single malt one day you and I do it, like on your platform. Yeah. Since you that. are a bilingual. Yeah. Um maybe this is something we can try. Yeah. But we do understand the frustration, but it is it is tough. It is very tough. Um, that's to answer the English translation section of your question. On the other side, if I'm not mistaken, you asked for um, summaries of change logs. Uh, yeah. Correct. And when it comes to change logs, okay. First of all, I don't think it's a good idea to do a summary of a change log, regardless of the language. The purpose of the change log is to list all the changes that have been done. Me doing a summary, for example, when we do class balancing, if the change log that I provide to you just says, oh yeah, we did an overhaul of the echo flip, these are the spells that are impacted. It's not gonna give you much if you want to actually understand if it's gonna, like, I could write it's a nerf or a buff, but you will want to know what those differences are. What are these changes? I understand maybe your, the suggestion is to have something available to the community earlier, um, but I don't think it would actually bring that much out of value. it will be easy for us, uh, I won't lie, we'll do a, a recap or a summary of a change log. Change logs can be 10,000, 20,000 words sometimes. Oof. Um, so if I do a recap, I'm ticking my box. I would say, well, the community asked for a recap, here it is. And then the community will say, but we don't have any details on it. I don't understand how the changes to this dungeon actually impact my team setup. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Can I ask you um, a very quick question, Manaya? Must everything that you want to translate and post to us to see, must they always follow that, that uh, pipeline you've described earlier? various departments and everyone has to put their stamp on it and then validate it and move it along the chain? I will put my hand up and own up to skipping mm -hmm. a few quality checks to ensure that the translations arrive sooner. Yeah. Wow. And yeah, I know this good. is going to be, Papino's going, ah, ha, 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 really? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Just, just no. co cover your ears. <laughs> no, no. The thing is, um, with the teams that work on updates, uh, whether it's class balancing or balancing content, equipment, whatever, they're not just working on that. Okay, so let's be clear. Um, so sometimes with you know small teams, we we dabble in different things and we do the best that we can. So sometimes there are delays, and because of the process chain, the last step is the localization and the community management team. Those are the two last steps. Gotcha. So I will cut sometimes on the review from copyright, let's say. So the change log in French might have some typos, um, but to us, it's like we can fix the typos ourselves later. But it, this could save us two days in the process to ensure that the translated change log arrives on time. Mm -hmm. Now, there are difficulties with providing a change log before a beta translator for the international community. Absolutely. And this has been the case ever since the game came out. But the difficulty here is the game, the, the game design team or the production team will agree on the contents of uh, the change log, so what's going to appear in the beta or in the update, a couple of days earlier, because they will do the test until the very last minute that they can, right? What can go in, what, can, what, what cannot. Once that's done and they finish the change log, we send it to localization, mm -hmm. right? All fine. But this sometimes is a couple of days before the beta or the update. So even if it's a little bit smaller, especially for beta uh, testing, by the time we open the beta, the text is already in translation, and we find something that we need to fix, like class spells need to be rebalanced. Mm. OK, check. The changes are done by the game design team. Then we have to send it back. So even before we get to the translation of the first version, we already have to send the second version. So it becomes oh. very difficult. Mm. It, like We have to make the decision. Do we hold back the changes in order to have the, the, the change log of a beta translated or do we take into account as much feedback as we can and adjust the content and tweak and balance and correct bugs as much as we can during the beta and then try to catch up for the release do you want do you understand what i mean yeah yeah massive. i'm probably butchering up this explanation <laughs> really bad no, Papino, think, how am i doing it's 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 Not a difficult perfect. one to answer I think the silence comes from the fact that the dawning realization of the difficulties that we don't see. What we see is event, French, no translation, and that's all we get to see from this side. But the peregrinate, the machinery that has to happen in between and the difficulties that you have to deal with in order to get it on time and the difficult decisions you have to make. Do we skip this to get it on time or do we give it to them two weeks and it's absolutely accurate and well? Thank you very much for that view. It's breathtaking, honestly, if I'm being honest. But if you don't mind, I do mm. want to add one point, though. Sure, sure. In saying this, mm. um, if I'm not doing a good job at expressing myself, I do apologize. The nerves are still here. But in no way does that mean that we think that the delivery is uh, acceptable or the lack of delivery is acceptable. We're still trying to find ways to improve this. We're still trying to find ways of readapting our processes. Five years ago, um, if I'm not mistaken, or no, even, sorry, five years ago, I was here. <sighs> Time flies. But before, we are no, especially those that were here a long time ago, mm -hmm. uh, I witnessed it as a player. We're no strangers to updates uh, coming out and uh, the change logs coming two weeks later because it was the community managers that had to translate it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Now we're, we're not at that point anymore, mm -hmm. but it's still very frustrating for everyone, including the production team, not to be able to have feedback from the international community because playing habits can be very different from one community to another. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. even if the majority of the community is French speaking, it's not a matter of, well, we have the majority of community feedback, so it's fine. No, no, we know there's three other, okay, we consider everyone one community, but let's just say for the purpose of the language, there's another three communities 
who played in their own little ecosystem, let's say, of their own servers for so for so long, mm-hmm. that might have uh, developed different strategies, different play styles, and they might be able to detect things that are not being reported on the French side. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? So, yeah. please, if I misconstrued my answer. Uh, I sincerely apologize. We know it's an issue. I just wanted to be able to give you an honest and ultra transparent uh, um, status update on where things are, but we're not satisfied yet. We're not stopping here. Thank you. Maybe with Unity, we'll have more time, but for now, this is how it is. But we do want to find a way that works for the English speaking, Spanish speaking, Portuguese speaking community to be able to actively participate in the beta as well. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Very much. That's more than we bargained yeah. for, I think. When Mr. Vlog Why am I doing this with my hands? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. 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 If you want to, I'm just conscious of time and also repetition so everyone gets equal speaking time. Do you want to go to Papino with the technical side of that question as well, if you want? Yeah. And um, uh, yeah, I'll just say thank you. I, I know very, very difficult one to answer. Um, but this one does kind of go into the previous question, but only slightly. Um, I think it's something quite a few players have actually had come up, uh, especially I've noticed it recently myself, actually earlier today. Mm-hmm. Um, so what the question is, is that some uh, some things are hard to implement, um, like the live translations when announcing like spell variants mm. uh, changes. Now, I don't know about a lot of you guys, but I've had two spell variants on my bar at the same time. Mm-hmm. Even when it's, say, with my ensemble and things like that. Um, so is it possible to, it's possible that the issues with the spell variants both being available but not usable after an update? Um, so you actually have to go in and re-click on your spells, re-do your ensembles. Is that mm-hmm. something that has been noticed or is it possible or is it a possible fix? Excellent. Um... <laughs> it's something we fight with every week. Um, not only <laughs> these aspects, but everything that um, touches even characters, spells, characteristics, etc. Um, it's the part in the game that is the oldest um, programming side, I, uh, I would say. So when we have bugs on these kind of things, it's really hard to to be able to to fix it and the ultimate answer for this is that for flash we do not have any developers working on this version for the client uh, the client is the um, the part of the program that is uh, handling everything that is shown in the game. So your UI, every monsters, every animation, etc., etc. It is the client. So we do not have any developers on the Flash client for the past few months and until the the launch of Unity because we are only working on Unity. I can guarantee that is it's something that is fixed on Unity uh, because it's not something that I've myself uh, tested out but i can see i can try <laughs> and see if it's fixed if it's not it's something that will be fixed during the beta <laughs> or you know that's why unity will get uh, a f- um, long beta to test out everything and as i said this kind of bugs really happens because of the flash client the client on flash it's not something that we want on unity so if the bug still exists it's something that we will address i suppose it's just another reason for us to all look forward to unity yes so many changes yes. honestly like we we only talked a few seconds about the the one after the japan expo showing the the fights and everything mm. changes but there's so many quality of lives updates with mm-hmm. unity so many changes uh the combat is way more dynamic we added a few options that will really change your life. Like, for example, I can spoil one. It's really a little one, but damn, it changed everything. Is that, you know, when you do a spell around your character and you have like four monsters around you, yeah. um, just, um, just a cell, 
yeah, adjacent mm -hmm. to your character. Mm -hmm. If you do um, an area of effects that will hit the monster behind your character, your yes. character will be transparent. So you will see everything that will happen behind your character. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a minor nice. thing, but <laughs> it's something that, detail. you know, the developer just pushed it. I'm like, you know, I just launched the clients at the end of the day just to test a few things that, and I'm like, oh, shoot, now we, we can see behind. You, we can see yeah. what happens to the wow. monster behind your character. I'm like, wow, wow. that's a minor thing, but <laughs> then it's good. Yeah. And that's the kind of attention of details we have with Unity we cannot do with Flash until now. Yeah. Thank you very much. That Beautiful. was spectacular. Thank you for, for the excitement at the end of it. I feel like I could go again for another two hours. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm very mindful okay. of your time. And while we did yeah. start a bit later, I'm going, we are all going to say thank you very much, Mr. Black, for those delightful and very thoughtful questions. And thank you, Mr. Black. Thank you, yeah, Mr. You're Black. very welcome and absolutely amazing to be here. And thank you ever so much, guys. Sweet. Um, I'm going to turn to you again, Papino and Manaya. How are you feeling right now? Should we do the last bit or because we started a bit earlier, should we just cut it straight to the conclusion? How do we feel? Time, Sunday? Everything is good. Um, Still got a bit of time. Good. My goodness, I couldn't have dreamt of a better scenario, except maybe the technical <laughs> issues at the beginning. But here we are. Here we are. Here we are. Right. We are moving to the last segment. For those of you that have just joined, that joined us right now, we're moving to the last part of the podcast with Papino and Manaya. Uh, uh, for those of you who do not know or have not watched any of my previous episodes, uh, there is something that I like to end on, which is exciting for both chat and the guests. And I invite chat to highly, highly participate because there will be direct questions and I want to see what everyone's answers are. What do you like about the game? This is a, a part where I gauge essentially your appreciation for the game, beauty, aesthetics, and then we get a different sense of you as a person generally. Right. Um, there is a little twist, however. I did tease it earlier, which was the word myths. So I've taken the <laughs> quick fire round and I've embedded it with loads of myths that I've compiled over the last three months. And we will get actual people who know how the game works internally and dispel these things for us once and for all. No more superstition in the international Dofus community. Are we ready to start? <laughs> yeah. Yep. This, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna have to sort of tell you that this might be a bit chaotic, so please do forgive me about it. Right, <laughs> I've warned you. Let's do it. So I'm gonna assign a name and then ask the question and then get the answer. Move on to the next person. This is how it's gonna go. First question: We spoke about classes earlier in the beginning. Which class have you not played yet and you're most curious about for a while, Papino? I've never really played Upper Mage. Ooh, interesting. And yeah, I'm really curious to try it because in, well, we, we spoke about Unity, but like the animation and the spell VFX are just so beautiful. Oh, I would love roots. to try it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would love to, to give it a try. Yes, that is brilliant. That's awesome. Uh, what class do you think lacks an identity and could do with a total revamp? And I'm asking Manaya because she's not the technical dev here. Which one? <laughs> okay, I... And I know I'm probably going to get a lot of, um, I, I can see Miss Sai in the chat okay. and she's probably going to be really <laughs> mad with me. Um, this is purely a personal opinion. Yeah. I used to like the Sakura role a lot more back in the day than now. Mm. Boom. I think the whole, <laughs> but that's, that's also my personal experience. You know, I did play that class at one point. Um, so yeah, Sakria oh. is not what I would like it to be. Look but at that's chat. just my opinion. It, it's it's your opinion is very popular, Mariah. Chat is buzzing with that. <laughs> really? <laughs> I thought I was wow. gonna get some hate. <laughs> Oh, but I said people. I tell the truth. Yes, you have said the truth, and I can tell you that I know three people who play Sacriers. One of them is Papino, Kaz, and Nevalon, both of which are in chat, and they suffer just like their character is meant to do. <laughs> They'd love the old one to come back. Cool, um, Papino, do you miss the critical fail aspect being part of the game? No, Ooh. no, I, I do not. Um, <laughs> wow, because. Even though it's a part where you can add it to your, you know, calculation mm. in the turn, it's not really a fun mechanics, uh, especially on the 
arms, you know, the, mm -hmm. the corps à corps. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Weapon, I you pass your turn. Control, yeah, and the weapons, when you just pass your turns, oh. it's just really a bad feel. Mm -hmm. So, no, I think it was a good mechanics <laughs> in 2010, but not right now. Fair enough. That is a good question. I like that you had that one read. No, not happening again. <laughs> so if anyone is thinking it might come back, there's your answer. Right. Manaya, you walk into Papino's office. You want to ask him about something. You accidentally trip and hit a button that magically deletes one dungeon. Which one is it? <laughs> Oxalice. I'm oh. sorry. <laughs> Can you tell us I'm why, sorry. please? Because you had it read. I really don't like that dungeon. I like. I really <laughs> don't. Uh, it just. It just... It never nothing appeals to me about that dungeon. Okay. Uh, the mechanics, the looks of it, um, no. And it's sad because <laughs> I absolutely love Srambad. Everything ah, yeah. about the area, mm -hmm. the monsters, I love, love, love Queen of Thieves. It's one of my favorite dungeons. Mm -hmm. uh, the storyline, but mm -hmm. that Toxalize just no. Get rid of it. Fab. That's it. You've heard it. Or Toxoliath. You know? I don't know how you guys pronounce it. Sorry. It's the same. Toxoliath. Le Toxo. Um, yeah. Speaking, because Manaya just mentioned right now, she likes the design of Shrambad and the whole area. What area do you find sublime, Papino? Which one do you like and think it's best design? Oh, right now, since it's the latest one we did, but Pandala is really, really gorgeous. Okay. And not mm. one specific area, but mm. even Aquadala, Ayadala, everything is beautiful <laughs> over there. And that's also why in the past few streams on Unity, we showed a lot of, of Pandala could, because yeah. really it's so beautiful. Was that because people voted for it or because you internally sort of deemed you gotta see this, guys. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah, clearly because we wanted to show it out. Like um, we we had our level design team worked on it, uh, especially on Aquadala. And when they were finished, we were all in in the place. You know, we were oh, <laughs> so that's what the unity. Goddamn. <laughs> so yeah, honestly, Pandala is really great. Fabulous. I love that. Um, uh, Manaya, very quick one. Do you still think, or do you rather think, that Solomon can Inkyvale is the best look in the game? There's only one right question answer, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, let's go! Uh, <laughs> now, in saying that, I think it's because of its significance in everybody's, like, uh, dopest progression, uh -huh. especially back in the, the old days. I do believe that... Um, it needs a little bit of a graphic revamp nowadays. It's uh -huh. still the best look. It looks cool in retro, like the 1.29 version. Looks good on 2.0. Um, but you know, what did you... I can't remember very well. What was the discussion that was mentioned in Thursday's live stream? I can tell you that because it's the next about question. Oh, is it? <laughs> No Are you way. reading my notes or something, Manaya? What the no, hell? I can't see anything. <laughs> so, yeah, go on, go on, spoil it for us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. So that's awesome that you've clearly saw it coming because it was a big topic. I don't know if you've seen chat. I'm talking to chat now. Have you seen the live and how chat was buzzing when they revealed the new Inky Veil? There were two angles in particular that made it look dreadful to say the least but it's not it's just the angle are you doing anything with that uh papino uh yeah like when we stopped the the live stream uh <laughs> the first thing we we, <laughs> we looked at each other with uh, loco which is uh, the art director of uh, of the office and we're like okay we will come back on the today <laughs> okay okay <laughs> Okay, yeah, yeah, that will be changing. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Let's go. Sape will be happy because he didn't make a single remark about yeah. the whole life and he just posted a photo of how the Inky Veil <laughs> and Solomon changed over the years. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, fabulous. On to the midst part right now. Uh, I'll start with the first one and try, please, try and hold back your laughter. Please, this, a lot of people take this very seriously. So the first one is, when we do big chest openings, so we farm dreams, lessons infinies, we have loads mm -hmm. of uh, boxes, the chests, and we open them all at once. A lot of people will tell you, before you do that, change the client to French, because then you have a higher chance of dropping legendary items. Is there any truth to that? 
<laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I know we, we sometimes have a lot of time to put in, inside the game, but not that much. <laughs> <laughs> So there's no line of code that gives you 10% extra chance or anything like no, that? No, that, that would be honestly <laughs> funny for a day or two, but not for entire oh, okay, years. Okay, okay, fair <laughs> enough, fair enough, fair enough. You've heard it, well, guys. I saw a question. Wait, wait, there's a comment <laughs> that says they need to say that. It's rigged. It's not rigged. <laughs> we have no reason to lie. No, no, no I need to explain this, Manaya. Every time we, uh, well, every time I do any sort of giveaway, no matter how small or big it is, someone in the chat puts hashtag rigged. So we sort of embraced it. So now we say it about everything preemptively. So it has no power anymore. We know if everything is rigged, then there's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so hashtag rigged in the chat. No, but uh, the answer is no. You don't get any advantage. You don't need to do that anymore. <laughs> you heard that, Leo, didn't you? So the next one is in the 129 version, do you guys remember when the officers were droppable? Um, there is a myth that formed around one office in particular called the Ebony Dofus. A lot of people mm -hmm. have never seen it get dropped. So people started suspecting some bosses or, and Pecky Pecky has always been the one that two people <laughs> yeah. swear it has dropped from. Is there any truth to that? <laughs> Unfortunately not. Uh, oh, like the retro team that we have um, at the moment is really <laughs> passionate about the game. And when we had it, um, Kutan in the game, okay. that's where um, the Ebony office was supposed to, to drop. Ah, Kutan, the little mini dungeon. Yeah, that, I get you. Yeah, that's why in retro we <laughs> added Elisael and Kutan with uh, Ebony and Ivory. Ivory, nice. That is awesome. Actually, do you know what? Uh, I sort of, a part of me was like, did they, as an Easter egg, not add it to the game to see how long it will take people to realize? <laughs> <laughs> nah, they were already working on the 2.0 and they were focused on so many other things, free ghost mainly, but yeah. That's awesome, yeah, okay. Um, do you know when you're doing dreams, there is one cosmetic that you can drop, the dream shield. And people have seen, uh, they, a lot of big dreamers say that there is absolutely no way you can drop it from 400 and plus. Is there any truth to that? I don't know. No, no, there is not. No, oh. um, you can have it earlier, but the chances, the chances sorry, are way lower. So yeah, that's why you have the feeling that it's only dropped until 400s and on. But I you can it. have it earlier, but you know, like the mathematics are just not <laughs> well, yeah, lucky yeah. enough for you. Yeah, Incredibly rare is what I'm getting. And I've left my personal one for the last one, which is um, a player who became part of the developer team. This is the context. Someone who actually was a player and started working at Ankama. In one of the videos, he filmed himself saying, oh, I get it now. It was so stupid. Why didn't we see it? And he was referring to a part of the Volvis quest where you have to go to the Well of Dreams mm -hmm. and drop some uh, quest items. You know the ones I'm referring about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of superstition around it. People tell you prospection affects it. Definitely go. Some people tell you it doesn't affect it. I've tried it. Some people to tell you tell you to pass your turn next to a wall in order to drop it. And so there's a lot of myths around that, and we just don't know what's true and what's not. <laughs> so prospection affects it, but since we nerfed prospection <laughs> earlier in the earlier this year, uh, yeah, it's harder technically to to get it. Uh, also, that's something I would want to address mm -hmm. uh, within the Unity's beta. Uh, mm -hmm. It's something I will keep an eye on because the nerf we did on the prospection, I do not think it works really well. So it might ah. be something we will address during the Unity's beta. But once again, it's also something we want players to, to give feedback on. So yeah. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. I'm looking at time and we're exactly where we wanted to be had we not started 10 minutes earlier. And I sort of wanted to end with one last challenge. This is a personal treat for myself uh, with Manaya. And you can be involved if you want, Papi. You know, in fact, we do want your opinion on that. So uh, I will show you something very briefly on the screen right now. You will see an orange object uh, appear. Yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> 
<laughs> the answer is already no. So here's the challenge and feel, feel free to say no at the end. I'm not asking for the shield. So the idea is I've started the character and I thought I don't like cosmetics. I hate them. But I found one that I liked and I formed my entire character around it. And then I realized it's not something I could just buy. I was a noob. You can't just go to the market and buy it. So I ask, how do you get those? You have to particip participate in um, sort of uh, little challenges on Reddit. And I've been participating in all of those and have been unlucky so far. And this is my personal treat and challenge I'm sort of proposing. You feel free to say no. Uh, you give me a challenge, something incredibly difficult with slim chances of happening. I don't know, like eternal conflict first with my four-man team or whatever. And if I manage to do that, then I could be rewarded with that. So I'm not asking for it, but I'll have to work really hard for it. And you get the fun to put a really difficult obstacle in my way of your choosing. And it'll be something I'll share with my community over the next few weeks while streaming. How do we feel about that, first of all? <laughs> Uh, okay. So oh, let's go. But I'm I'm sort of worried about what the challenge is gonna be. <laughs> I cannot uh, give uh, a shield of this rare variety outside the cons the restrictions of oh, get you. Okay, its okay. usage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. It would be. Yeah, it would be. Uh, Ah, Personally, I think it would be unfair to the people that keep trying to get it on uh, fair enough on Reddit. But, but, but <laughs> propose like we're gonna organize like that. There's amazing moderators on the Reddit, uh, but on the dopest of Reddit, yeah, uh, they're very kind to have added me when I was a CM, and they never booted me out wow, okay. uh, maybe because they forgot about me but they're <laughs> amazingly nice and very dedicated yes <laughs> uh, i do give them codes uh -huh. but how about in front of everybody mm -hmm. you come and propose to me mm -hmm. for if you want to have a reddit shield organize 10 community events on reddit and where we will give shields to the winners mm -hmm. And at the end, one of them will be for you for organizing uh, those 10 events with the support of the moderators on the subreddit and following Let's their go. rules. Mm -hmm. How about that? Is that a good Let's compromise go. instead? 10 community <laughs> events, all successful, Ten. coordinated with the moderators of the subreddit, and then 10 get me one for myself. You've heard it, guys. There's going to be a lot of events in Reddit. Let's go. <laughs> 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 that is awesome. Thank you ever so much, Manaya. I know it was really no difficult. Problem. I didn't know the specificities of... Uh, you put me on the spot, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm really sorry Ooh. about that. Yeah. But thank you very much, though, for the I'm idea. Um, and yeah, thank you very much all for being here. It was incredible. Um, you know what we're doing after this conversation? We are thinking and strategizing about the next 10 community events on Reddit. That is for sure. <laughs> and trust me when I say that I'm terribly sad that this conversation is coming to an end but please despair not uh, we now open the floor to our guests to take turns get us excited about the future promote their work and perhaps even tell us when we will next see them papino manaya the floor is yours take all the time you want all yours do you want to you go want to first go? no no go on go on <laughs> I will make it short and sweet because those who have seen me around, I am a waffler when uh, it comes to live stream. I'm not very comfortable with it. I am very grateful for the invitation uh, by Single Malt, by with Eslix, Mr. Black, and Washington. Um, you keep saying you have prestigious guests, but actually we're quite moved and honored and a bit humbled as well that you guys invited us to be part of your podcast thank you um, for being here. so thank you so much uh, i will make it brief um the international community those who have heard me speak either at conventions or for crossmo notes or whatever it's very dear to my heart and uh we still think and you guys are still at the forefront every plan just so you guys know everything is ready in french way ahead of time, they don't get their stuff until your stuff is ready. Um, we still have a long way to go. 
and we're not keeping up yet. So if you have suggestions, if you want to contribute, the forum is there. You have an amazing community manager called Thanatos. She is spectacular. She's dedicated. Um, so yeah, if you have suggestions, if you have questions, she's on, she's behind Twitter. She keeps us updated. Hit her up, ask her questions, make suggestions. Do you want to organize events? You want to do community stuff? She'll run it past me. She'll let me know. We will figure stuff out. As soon as we can get improvements to the process of communications, you guys will see it. We will keep you informed. But in terms of the plugging, I am now handing you over to our wonderful producer, Papineau, because I've done talking and I'm done waffling. And that's <laughs> oh, it. You've, you've been spectacular. Thank you, Manaya, for that very lovely message that is resonating so hard with chat. And please just look at how many hearts are in there for you. <laughs> Have a good look at that. That's awesome. Yeah. And then for me, it's just thanks you a lot for the invitation it's my first time um, talking about the game for the international community i hope it was great for you guys uh, i hope everything was good and the information was surprising too um for a shout out for the for the following in Dofus, i would say the main events are either the ankama convention do not, uh, do not be afraid to come. Uh, we have amazing community managers that will be there. We will have Manaya, even I, will be there to, to just be able to speak with you, talk about the game, talk about your patient. Everything everything will be a good way to, to engage about the game. And then, of course, the Yenichi beta. I, I cannot end the stream without speaking once again <laughs> about the beta, but it's a huge thing for the game, a huge thing for this history, 20 years long, and the beta would be the perfect opportunity to exchange with the entire community, not only the French one, but the international international community, of course, and just make Duffels even better than we can have now. So yeah, and a huge shout out to everyone who came on the stream, Mr. Black, you, um, Single Mouth, who prepared everything. It's been hours and hours of preparation. I know, I, I watched the, I read uh, quickly the, the Ask Ankama channel on the Discord. So yeah, I, I know it's been a lot of preparation, but thank you guys, really, uh, the effort you put in this stream was amazing. So yeah. It is guys. a pleasure and a blast for everyone that you are here to begin with. So thank you ever so much, a million times for taking the time off your valuable Sunday to spend it with us. It continues to blow my mind that this is happening. It will take me a few days to realize that it has happened, and then I'll start back going back <laughs> to work. Well, you've heard it, everyone. Uh, your feedback is incredibly important when it comes to the beta. It's there for us to test and give feedback. Uh, and this is something I feel like we should do a lot more. When you see something, speak about it so that there is a chance for it to change before the final release. Because it's all good saying I don't like it after it's released, but not if you've had three weeks to test it and tell the developers, tell the team, guys, I don't like this. So please do take the time to do this and answer the call of Papino to go and check the feedback page and put your thoughts out there. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you ever so much for being here with us. And I think I speak for everyone when I say that I've personally had a blast and hope you as well have enjoyed it, our guests. Uh, best of luck with your communication strategy and the ongoing work for all the new events and releases, Manaya. And best of luck for the deployment of 272 Babino. <laughs> Thank you once more. Look forward to speak with you ne next. And to everyone watching, I hope you have a marvelous time. I did promise it was gonna be worth your while. And please do tell us in chat if you like part two. After our guests do leave, we will continue and speak about the upcoming events, the Reddit community <laughs> events and all the things that are happening. There's 10 of them. I don't want to excite you too much, but yeah, that's the reality of it. Thank you, Papino. Thank you, Manaya. Lots of love to you both. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for that. Have a lovely weekend, everyone. And Sweet. see you in game. Bye. Yeah, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.